area under a curve before using? Yes, definite integrals. This gave us the area under a curve listed in the integrand and the x-axis. Very good. In addition to finding the area between the graph of a function and the x-axis, integrals can be used to find the areas of more general kinds of regions, and that's what we're doing today. Since the x-axis is really the function what? Seriously? Yes, yeah, thank you. Y equals zero. This function did not have to be mentioned in the definite integral, and you'll see why in a second. So the formula for actually finding area between two curves is if f and g are continuous, and the function f of x is greater than, meaning higher, because we're talking about y values, right? The function is higher than the g of x through a and b. The area between the curves is equal to the integrand from a to b of f of x minus g of x. Pretty easy, and then you just integrate. So it's not, today's lesson isn't too bad. Um, so, here's a diagram of the following. Find the area between y equals secant squared x and y equals sine x from 0 to pi over 4. So if you didn't know that secant squared x was higher than sine x, then you would have to figure that out first. But I think most people have a picture in their head what secant squared looks like. That's the, the inverse, yeah, the, the reciprocal of cos. So it gets flipped. You have the, the asymptotes, then it's flipped down here, right? And then we have the sine. So you won't get provided with the graph to know which one's higher, okay? So how could we figure out which one is higher if I didn't have a graph? Yeah, you could, well, what happens if this, this isn't a calculator question right now? Yeah, like, do you know what secant of zero is? Because cos is 1, so then you'll get 1. And then what is sine of 0? Zero? 0. So we know that just plug in a value and you can figure it out. Now the problem lies is if, if the curves end up crossing and then in one part it's higher and one point, point is lower. So knowing your, what your graphs look like in a picture in your head like helps out tremendously, right? So anyways, so what are we going to do? We're going to do the integral from 0 to pi over 4. Yeah. But that will be, probably be a calculator question. Depending on if it crosses at decimal, like irrational numbers, then that would be decimal. Otherwise, it would be, you know, you got to solve using your pre-cal knowledge, right? Set them equal to each other and solve, right? Yes? It'll be part again, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so anyways, it is, just like it says here, we're going to take the top one, which is secant squared x, and we're going to subtract the bottom one, which is secant x. Okay? So, Josh, what is the integral of secant squared x? <laughs> yeah. Does everybody know that one? Yeah. Tan x. And then what's the integral of minus sine? Plus, Plus cos x. And then this would be from 0 to pi over 4. And if you're not sure if it's a minus, just find the derivative of cos and you know it's minus sine. So then if this is minus sine, then it has to be plus, right? So anyways, then we plug her in and subtract. So this would be tan of pi over 4 plus cos of pi over 4 subtract bracket tan of 0 plus cos of 0. So what's tan of pi over 4? 1. And what is cos of pi over 4? Root 2 over 2. Um, what is um, tan of 0? It is 0. And what's cos of 0? Plus 1. So does everybody see the 1 subtracts the 1, and what are we left with? Root 2 over 2. Yeah. Pretty easy, hey? Now, what we're doing right now, just so you know, 
Because we're talking about the integral from 0 to pi over 4, we're so I did, I was trying to say because we're going from 0 to pi over 4, what we're actually doing is finding vertical slices and they're stacking them together. So can you picture a vertical slice and that's how we're calculating the area? Because remember Riemann sums and all that, th those are like the little rectangles. Well, essentially what we're doing is little rectangles, but they're so small we're calling them slices and we're stacking them together and that's why this works, okay? So... Anyways, and does everybody understand why I'm subtracting the higher? Because the higher would be the area. Yeah, and then, yeah, okay. So do you see why this works the way it does? Okay, so now we're going to find the area enclosed by intersecting curves. So although I showed you the graph of this, again, this is a non-calculator question. So I don't know what's above. I don't know what's below. And the question actually says, find the area that's basically enclosed by the two curves. So this is where I was saying, you don't have the upper and lower bound here. You have to figure it out. So the way you do this is you set them equal to um, each other, because that gives you the intersection, right? Does that make sense? Because where they're equal is where they intersect, OK? So this is a quadratic. So I'm going to move everything over. So I get 0 equals x squared minus x minus 2. So then that's easy, it factors, right? x minus 2, x plus 1, so x equals 2 and negative 1, which is exactly where it shows in the graph right here. Do you see that? Okay, so now we need to figure out which one's higher. And if you don't know, like honestly, I think you should know, what does this look like? It's a parabola that's upside down, shifted up 2, right? Like you don't have to put values in. You should know which one's higher, right? And then this is just a line, diagonal line going down. So you know that the parabola is higher, yes? So then we're going to set up the integral. So we're going from negative 1 to 2 of 2 minus x squared subtract negative x. So you've got to watch when you're subtracting here because there's going to be a lot of signs, and this is how you're going to actually lose... Um, marks, right? And if I can repeat enough times, always try to simplify anything before you start to integrate. So a lot of the times they'll have two of the same like terms, like put them together before you start integrating, because otherwise it's a mess once you start doing this. So this is the integral from negative 1 to 2 of negative x squared plus x um, plus 2 dx, yes? Okay, so what's the, what's the integral of negative x squared? Yeah, negative one-third x to the power three. And then what's the integral of x? One-half x squared. And then plus two x. And this is from negative one to two. I don't know what happened to my negative one there. No, you, you don't have a plus C on definite integrals, right? Because they subtract, right? Okay, so negative one-third times eight plus one-half times four plus four, subtract bracket, uh, negative one-third times negative one plus one-half times one, I guess minus two. Okay. I have a negative bracket, right? Okay, so then I'm going to simplify. This is negative 8 thirds plus 2 plus 4. This is minus minus, which is a plus, but then there's a minus. Yeah, 1 third. Then this is minus 1 half. And then this would be plus 2. Yes? Got to really watch your signs. Uh, the reason why I separated instead of combining them before I did this, because I could see the negative 8 thirds and the negative 1 third combines nicely, doesn't it? We get negative 9 thirds, which is negative 3. So then, oh, we still have a half, though, darn it. Anyways, that's okay. Yeah, that's right. 6 and minus 3 is 3, plus 2 is 5, and then subtract a half would be 4 and a half. And it's okay if you have a mixed number. Or let's just change it to improper, 9 over 2. They wouldn't take marks off. 
Okay, now we're going to use our graphing calculator. Okay, so let's get a graphing calculator out. Make sure your calculator is in radians. Always check that before you start doing stuff. Anyways, um, I don't know which one's on top, but the nice thing is the calculator is... Um, so we're going to put 2 cos x, x, and we're going to have x squared subtract 1. Okay, so if I graph this, um, let's go zoom fit, because I have no idea what the viewing window is. Oh, the zoom fit doesn't, huh? Uh, zoom 6, okay. Zoom 6. You could also shrink it if you don't want to look like negative 5, 5, 5. Okay, so it's saying find the area between the two curves. So can everybody see, because we know what the cosine graph sort of looks like. The cosine graph is the wave, and we know the other one's the parabola. So we know that this, the cosine graph is on top. Everybody understand? However, we don't know what that is, and we don't know what that is, because we have to find basically the area right here. Okay? So how do we figure out that point right there? Intersect, yeah. So, number five. Some people are going to get lost here if they're not paying attention. Okay, now, that means that x equals negative 1.26, blah, blah, blah. What am I going to do with that? Right, store, it store it somewhere. So we're going to quit out of there. And I'm going to go x and go enter. Do you see I have negative one point? 2, 6, blah, blah, blah. We're going to store it in A. We're going to store it in A. Oops. Yeah. Ready for the second one. Okay, I am recording this, so we're going to find the second intersection right now. So that is second calc. You have to go closer to that second one, otherwise it'll calculate the... Oh, shoot, what's just happened there? Well, technical difficulty, we'll try it again. All right. Okay, second calculate. It's the intersect, number five. Get close to that intersection... So it knows exactly which one to calculate. Bada of being, there it is. That is positive 1.256. Oh, look at that. Well, does that make sense to you? It's a mirror image, right? So anyways, we're going to quit out of there. Are you watching? We're going to go X. So we get it. And we're going to store into B. So my lower bound was A, my upper bound was B. Okay, so now to get full marks on the exam, I just want to show you what you need to do because um, we're not going to, because this is calculator, you still have to show work, right? It's not just here's the answer because this might be a, you know, a three mark question or something like that, right? Okay, so um, you could say what y equals 2 cos x, sorry, let's, we're going to solve it. So um, 2 cos x equals x squared minus 1, x equals negative 1.2654, um, and, oh, you could just go plus and minus, very good. Okay, so now here's the thing. If you use A and you refer to A in, in here, then, then you need to tell me what A is because the marker will not know. Otherwise, you can just do integral from negative 1.2654 and 1.2654. And which one was on top again? It was the cosine run, right? No, it was the, uh, it was the cosine? Okay, thank you. 
Well, no, you just look, right? And you can tell. Okay, so this is going to be cos, sorry, 2 cos x minus bracket x squared minus 1 dx, which you might just simplify that when you punch it into your calculator. Okay, so remember that a was the negative one and b was the positive one. Yeah, oh yeah, you can use y1 and y2, as long as you know which one is y1 and y2. So if y1 was um, cos x and y2 is that, you can actually, if you, if you actually put that in there, you could actually go y1 minus y2 here. As long as you told me that y1 was 2 cos x, you can't just throw that in there and not, ex you know what I mean? So I would, whatever's faster for you, um, do it. So. I think I'm going to actually, because it's uh, in there, I, and it's, it's y1 minus y1. So this is going to be math 9. And this is going to be vars, y vars function, y1 subtract vars, y vars. I know you guys have something slightly different, right? y2 comma x comma remember we're going from the lower bound so that is my a comma my upper bound is my b there we go yeah. is that what you got all on the calculator yeah so oops i'll put it right here so then you need the dx, otherwise you'll lose marks. Um, so equals four point, or I guess approximately four point nine nine four nine is good. Okay, so if a boundary of a function is defined by more than one, sorry, if a boundary of a region is defined by more than one function, uh, we can partition. <laughs> I know it says. We can cut it up if you want. That's, partition the region into subregions that correspond. Yes, yeah, split. We can split the region. Do you want that into subregions that correspond to the function change? So, find the area of the region R in the first quadrant. That now this is where reading with, um, like reading well, is going to help you a lot. You can't just skim and and say, oh, it's this whatever. The, the problem is now they're, so let's read this. Find the area of the region R in the first quadrant. So even though, do you see how this is bounded? It's going to intersect, like it actually doesn't intersect. So it's saying just this part here. This is what they want. The first quadrant that's bounded above by the square root of x and below by the x-axis and y equals x minus 2. So the problem is, is, do you see how this is different? How is this different? Because it's the area, so do you see at 2, it's this and here, yeah, and then this is this and here. Do you see? like the x minus 2, once it, it can only start approximating after 2. Yes, yes. Okay, so do we get this? Okay, so now physically we can see um, where where it starts, but uh, you know how would we how would we um, I don't know how would we figure out where it the the x minus two starts? What is that? What is the x-axis considered where? It, yeah, that's the x-intercept. So all you have to do is find the um, x-intercept and you know it's starting at 2, right? And again, you should have a rough kind of idea, the square root of x, what it looks like, grade 12, right? And grade 10, y equals x minus 2. And just do a rough sketch and you can see that you've got to figure out that and then there you go. Okay, so the first one is going to be from 0 to 2. And what is the function there? Just the, uh, square root of the square root of x. Now, technically, just so you know, this is the square root of x subtract 
y equals 0. But when you subtract 0, there's no point in writing it. So that's why we never actually wrote it before. Do you understand what I'm saying? y equals 0 and y equals the square root of x. When we were figuring it out before, the reason it always had to do with the x-axis is because we we're always subtracting 0. Sure. So this is the square root of x minus 0, right? dx plus the integral from 2. And then how would we figure out that it ends at 4? Set them equal to each other. So the square root of x equals x minus 2. How do we solve this? Square both sides, we get x equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. Hopefully we know what we have to FOIL there. So 0 equals um, x squared minus 5x plus 4. So 0 equals x minus 4, x minus 1. Yes? So x, I'm sorry? Yeah, equals 4 and 1. Um, so you might say, well, why is it? Because we square both sides, we, we would have to um, check. Our, remember back in the day, you had to check and reject? When we square radicals, if you put 1 in, do you see you get the square root of 1 is 1, and then 1 minus 2, this would get rejected? Yeah. Okay, so, but you would have realized that you only need the 4 anyways, but just so you know why the 1, kind of like, why is the 1 in there? Well, that's an extraneous solution. Okay, so, then on top is the square root of x minus um, bracket x minus 2, dx, yes? So this is the integral from 0 to 2 of the square root of x dx plus, I'm just going to simplify first. So this is the square root of x minus x plus 2 dx, yes? Okay, do you want me to do this with you or do you want to go ahead? <laughs> okay, so this is x to the power of half, so if I add 1 to a half I get yeah, 2 thirds x to the power 3 over 2 from 0 to 2. Yep. Plus, and you'll get the same thing there, I guess. So this is 2 thirds x to the power 3 over 2. And then if I add one there, I get minus 1 half x to the power 2 plus 2x from 2 to 4. So, 3 over 2 is the square root cubed, right? Yep. So, so zero. well, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it as, yeah, 0 will just go away. So, um, you, so yeah, uh, most of the time I say square root first, then cube it, but, but 2 to the yeah. power, it doesn't really matter. Like, you're going to get 2 root 3. Um, or you're going to get the square root of 8, whatever you want. What do you want to do? Square root of 8? Okay. So times the square root of 8 um, plus, I guess we'll get the same thing kind of here, right? Actually, with the 4, the square root works nicer, right? So, but 8 is the square root of 2 root 2, so you might want to do that now or later. It doesn't matter. So anyways, 2 thirds, this is going to be the square root of 4, which is 2 times 8, right? Because... 2 cubed is 8, minus 4 squared is 16, and half of that is 8, and then plus 8. Well, that's kind of nice. Subtract, bracket, huh? And then here, 2, again, we're going to get this goopy thing, 2 thirds, oh, that's kind of nice, they'll cancel. So it didn't really matter in the end, right? Uh, so that would be the square root of 8. And then this is going to be subtract, 2 goes in there, 2 squared is 4, 1 half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is uh, plus 4. Okay, so the nice thing is, is this will cancel with this, so I don't even have to deal with it anymore, right? 
Yeah. I'm sorry? Those two eights. Those two eights can go. No, they should be both negative. Oh. Because they should be both. No, the first one should. The first one is negative, the second one is positive, right? Okay, so then I get 16 over 3, and then this is minus 2 plus 4, which is 2, but there's a minus, so minus 2. Yes? So that is 6 over 3, so I get 10 over 3 as my final answer. Okay, any questions? So now we're going to integrate with respect to y. That means we're going to do horizontal slicing this time. So, so this is horizontal slicing. But the cool thing on the calculator is they don't actually really care. So find the area of the region R in the previous example by integrating with respect to y. Ooh. So. Instead of having um, y equals, we're now going to have x equals. So if y equals the square root of x, x would equal y squared. Does everybody see that? Okay. And then if y equals x minus 2, x would equal y plus 2. Okay? And so remember we're doing horizontal slicing. Right? We're going to do the same question, just showing that you can do it a different way, because sometimes you'll actually have to do it this way. So, so here's the cool thing about this. We don't have to split it up. Does everybody see? Because if we set it equal to each other, we'll see that our integral is going to go from 0 to 2. Think about it stacking this way, right? And how do I know? Well, set them equal to, do, to each other. y squared equals y plus 2. y squared minus y minus 2 equals 0. y minus 2, y, I guess, plus 1, right? So then I get y equals 2 and negative 1. And you might say, well, what about negative 1? Negative 1 is below the x-axis, right? Plus, plus, if I sub it back in, I would end up rejecting it, right? Because I can't have a negative y equal to a, a, um, a square root. OK, so that means all I have to do is go from the integral from 0 to 2. Which one's on top? The y squared, right? So y squared subtract the line, which is y plus 2. And then this is with respect to y now, dy. So I'm just going to simplify 0 to 2 of y squared minus y minus 2, dy. So what is the integral of y squared? 1 third y to the power of 3. What's the integral of minus y? Minus 1 half y squared. What's the integral of minus 2? Minus 2y. And this is going from 0 to 2. You think this is going to be easier than the last way? Yeah, way easier. So 2 goes in there, we get 8 thirds. Minus 2 goes in there, we get um, 4 times a half, which is minus 2, plus 4. And then if I subtract 0, I'm not subtracting anything. Oh, sorry. Did I do something wrong? It should be minus 4, yep. So then this is 8 thirds subtract 6. Oh, something's wrong. Something's wrong then. Can we subtract 2? What? Oh, sorry. I, I'm, I'm, I totally screwed up. Um, so you know how I was going from, um, I was stacking this way and I said oh this is on top we have to now we have to look at this way so I actually subtracted the wrong way I should be going from he, this subtract this from right to left oh, it's okay it's okay it's not a big deal um, all the big deal is so this is going to be 
Uh, y plus 2 subtract y squared. Okay, does everybody understand why it's that way? When I was doing the other one, I was going top subtract bottom. When I'm doing um, this way, I have to go right subtract left. So, 1 half y squared plus 2y minus 1 third y cubed from 0 to 2. So this is going to be 4 plus 4 minus 8 thirds, subtract 0, right? Sorry, that's not 4, that's a 2. Oh my god, I'm losing it here. 2 squared is 4, half of 4 is 2. Nobody's keeping up with me here. 6 minus 8 thirds, 6 is what over 3? 18 over 3 and I get 10 over 3. So 10 over 3 is the same as 10 over 3 there, except one way I, I stacked vertically and the other one I st stacked horizontally. Okay, well the good news is, um, oh no, I guess it's not done. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Compute the area of x equals y squared and x e See, this is now your force to do horizontal slicing. What do you mean? What do we do differently? We switch them because we have to do top subtract, otherwise we're getting the subtraction wrong. Yep. Honestly, if it's stated in y equals already, I would be doing vertical slicing. If it's stated like the next question here in x equals, then you're pretty much forced because it's hard to solve for y. And you don't have time to solve for y. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So now I need to figure out where they intersect, and that's pretty easy, right? Set them equal to each other. So y squared equals 2y squared minus y minus 2. 0 equals y squared minus y minus 2. And you know they're always going to factor if it's not um, on, a, on a calculator. So that means y equals 2 and minus 1. So there is minus 1, and there's the height of 2, right? And again, we're doing horizontal slicing, which means I'm slicing it this way, right? Stacking it up. So, um, how, how am I going to figure out which one's higher? So, just figure out, um, you know, you could graph it quickly, which you may not know how to graph x equals y squared. If you're going from, um, remember, we need to find which one's the furthest one to the right. So, that means we need to figure out, um, like, where this is. So the nice thing is, and I'll tell you a little secret, if you, if you graph the parabola this way and you turn it this way, it's the same thing. And that's how we're going to use a graphing calculator too. Yeah, we're just swapping variables, yeah. So if you know what, if y, that x equals y squared looks like this, take your x and y axis and rotate it right? There is x equals y squared. Do you see what I'm saying? And then for this one, you might have to, um, you know, complete the square or, or, or figure out approximately where it is. And if, if you don't, here's the thing. You know that this one, if this is y equals 2x squared minus x minus 2, you know that it's, uh, um, it's crossing the y at minus 2, right? And it's, it's a stretch. And it's somewhere, whatever. But so when I, when I rotate this, do you see? If I put this like this, I know that this one is ahead of that one. Quick little thing, right? So there you go. So when you're doing top minus bottom, it's right minus left, because right is the biggest, right? When you're going this way from left to right, this is the biggest. It's always biggest minus smallest, right? Okay, so integral from negative 1 to 2 of, um, remember, the most right would be y squared minus bracket 2y squared minus y minus 2. 
dy. I would simplify. y squared minus 2y squared is minus y squared. And then minus minus is plus y plus 2. So now we're int going to integrate. Um, add 1, so I get negative 1 third y to the power 3. And then add 1, I get 1 half y to the power 2 plus 2y from negative 1 to 2. And for, for um, time's sake, I'm just going to give you the answer. It's uh, 9 over 2. Okay? You could figure it out later if you want, but the answer is 9 over 2. Um, okay, so the next one is a graphing calculator one. And it's in y equals form and x equals form. Ooh. So what does that mean then? Yeah, so which one's the easiest one to solve? So the only pro so just so you know, if you do y equals, you're going to have to do plus or minus the square root. And on the graphing calculator, that doesn't really work very well. No, for, for this one, it's just the cube root of y. Do you see what I'm saying? Whereas here, when you square root, you get the plus and minus. in order Because you'll get this square root if you only get the positive and this minus, right? So in this case, it actually is better to do it in uh, x equals. So x equals the cube root of y. OK? So we're going to find, we're going to graph this and find the intersection, hopefully pretty fast. OK, this is the cool thing. It doesn't matter that it's x equals and y equals as long as in on paper, it says x equals. But on our calculator, we can use the y equals. It's really cool. OK, so in y equals, we're going to put um, the cube root. So the cube root would be x to the power uh, 1 third. You might have a cube root. I'm just doing this because it's easier. And then for the second one, it is um, x squared. Does everybody know what I'm doing right now? I'm, although mine says y equals x to the power one third, it's really x equals y to the power one third. Okay? And of course, our graphs aren't going to look like the graph that's sh shown there because we're, sw remember, we'd have to rotate it this way. Okay, so I'm going to just graph it. I'm going to go zoom six. And you can see there's the graph and there's the, the parabola, essentially. But rotate it the other way. So watch this. Watch this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on here. <laughs> Look at this. Isn't that cool? Oh, it's a little. OK, what's wrong? I, did I rotate it the wrong way? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, could it be? Is it negative? I'm sorry? Because we only changed one to the x equals to the cube root of y. We need to change another formula to be solved for x. And the other one's No, everything, everything is good. It, I thought this was going to work better than I thought. But anyways, it doesn't matter. So, um, so now what we're going to do is we need to find these two intersection points, right? Okay. Yes? We need to find the two intersection points. So, so we're going from this height here to this height here. Remember, yes. But the, um, remember that uh, we we have to find the intersections here. So let me go back to this. So we got to find that first intersection, and that is ooh. So calculate intersect. I know. <laughs> um, I don't think mine's right. I did something wrong, hey? It, it doesn't match the diagram. Is it the negative cube root? But that doesn't make no, sense. no, hold on. 
I don't think I don't think it's worth your time to store negative one. So um, let's go to the second one. Um, intersect. Okay. And we get 1.793, blah, blah, blah. So that's the, that's the one we have to um, keep, right? So remember, our x and our y's are switched right now. So I have to look at the x value, right? So I'm going to quit out of there, and I'm going to go x equals, and I'm going to store it into a. Oh, why does that always happen to me? Ah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to do, um, I'm going to write this down first before I forget what my numbers are. I'm just going to put this here for a second. So, um, so the, the far, we're going to be going from, uh, negative 1 to 1.793, somebody, um, the cube root, right? So we're going to have the y to the power 1 third subtract bracket y squared minus 2 dy. Is everybody good with what I'm doing? So the integral from negative 1 to 1 of... Um, and again, this is calculator, so I'm showing way more than I have to. Minus y squared plus 2 dy. So, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I meant 1 point. Yeah, 1.793. It's because I'm trying to rush there. Anyways, so, so we're going... There we go. I'm going to go to math calc 9. And so this is, um, oh, I do have it in there, right? Um, so y1 minus y2 in mine. So, so it is vars y vars. Vars y vars comma, um, x, comma, and then it is uh, negative 1, comma, alpha, a. Okay, 4.21, blah, 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 if it shows up. <laughs> it takes a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of weird that it takes so long. Okay, so... That is the correct answer for any of those doubters out there. <laughs> so, um, and just for fun, if you're, because you know this is this has to be the answer, do it the other way, right? Uh, 4.2149. Do you know what I'm saying? Do it as vertical slicing and solve the other way. Um, okay.